by which we can you know uh, represent this uh, uh, the height uh, or or we can realize the definition which we are making that means uh, uh, the surface of a cubic inch because uh, just while saying the definition our server is ser our purpose is not served we need to uh, realize it also and for realizing we need to do the measurement we need to have certain information uh, numerical information and by that uh, we can realize this definition so mean sea level is one such way by which we are realizing it okay so that's that's you need to understand very clearly there is one thing which is definition one one thing which is very uh, popular is the definition what is the definition of that uh, uh, so called uh, any surface and how do you realize it that's another thing so uh, by definition the geoid is surface of a cube potential but how do you realize it there is one way of realizing is mean sea level this figure which is representing is that this is a point uh, let's say on the on the this is your uh, the earth surface the green is your earth surface and there is a point p when you drop a normal there are two types of normals which would be drawn one that will that will follow the uh, line of gravity okay the perpendicularly with the help of plumb bob and that will intersect the line of geoid so this the r uh, let's say point which is intersecting to geoid surface and this q is obviously with the ellipsoid so the both are two different uh, heights which we are talking about so one capital h is called as orthometric height and second the height with respect to um, ellipsoid would be a small h so you need to understand this also that uh, the capital h is from geoid and small h is from ellipsoid obviously the heights uh, are represented with respect to the surfaces you have ellipsoid surface you have geoid surface okay then this the green one is your actual Uh, so called as uh, uh, actual uh, surface that is where we are living so if you drop any perpendicular obviously the prime uh, perpendicular that means with the help of plumb bob or any kind of device which you are having with the instrument so the moment you try to follow that plumb bob it will be intersecting the geoid this would be the if you drop any perpendicular uh, from your position where you are sitting it would follow the line of gravity okay. this is different thing and the height with respect to that surface would be known as orthometric height okay so this height h is orthometric height then this is the ellipsoidal normal which normally you cannot do you have to mathematically represent it this is the ellipsoidal normal okay and this is the uh, the two heights which are very relevant in geoinformatics one is ellipsoidal height and obviously the orthometric height please remember a point is very well represented by lambda phi and capital h rather than lambda or phi lambda small h we are uh, much more interested in lambda phi capital h kind of representation for a topographical mapping rather than lambda phi small h kind of representation because lam lambda phi small h would not be exactly representing the mass distribution beneath your surface of earth okay that would because see when the perpendicular is following the line of gravity then it would be better to you should represent the height the third component by capital h okay although the lab, phi and lambda are latitude and longitude and for that we'll have a discussion uh, later on in the slide that how do you estimate these uh, latitude and longitude and why uh, because you are majority of you would be from cpsc board you would be having little uh, description about how to uh, uh, you know define a point or how to define the latitude and longitude of a point so you all know that so these are the uh, relationships Uh, between two surfaces i think it's very quite easy we do not need any kind of discussion in that but yes what 
is more important is that you need to understand those terminology which we are going to introduce now so now you know topographical surface that's very clear you now you know geoid now you know ellipsoid now you know what is ocean now what is geoid undulation you are probably much be uh, more uh, confident about is that the difference between obviously the or you could also call it as the height from the ellipsoid the geoidal undulation is called as height from the ellipsoid geoidal height from the ellipsoid so if you have uh, uh, this uh, the difference which is this height we are calling it as geoidal undulation we are representing it by n capital n okay so from let's say if you have uh, if you uh, if i just want to draw a bit uh, a better figure so if i take two perpendicular like this so you have capital h you have a small h and this little height this that is height from ellipsoid is capital n so a small h here is represented as h plus n but with certain assumption it is not always the case okay there are certain assumptions what are those assumptions we'll discuss that now here they where the the chances that the, your uh, a normal to ellipsoid and normal to geoid that means the moment you take the parallel uh, the perpendicular then there will be a certain difference between these two normals isn't it this this difference i am talking about this one i'm just highlighting it by red so that you would probably understand i'm talking about this angle theta this is a uh, different at different places and uh, this would be uh, obviously the deflection of a vertical this angle theta is known as deflection of vertical so i think normal to ellipsoid you better know normal to geoid any kind of confusion in this slide uh, you can simply ask what we are representing here ellipsoid ellipsoid is a mathematical surface that uh, represents the earth as a rotational ellipsoid which consists of mass as well as solid as well as liquid and when it is rotating that body uh, of uh, mm -hmm. earth is represented by a rotating ellipsoid and it is a mathematical surface on the contrary geoid is an imaginary surface okay so i hope it is very clear in fact in one of the slide also i have uh, told you that uh, you can represent the earth by two uh, in, in, in fact i think uh, in the in the previous to previous yes here you have represented the earth by ellipsoid and geoid representing representation of horizontal and vertical geodetic datum of earth that is means ellipsoid and geoid This is very important. Where uh, you need to understand that the difference between ellipsoidal normal or normal to ellipsoid and normal to geoid would be separated by deflection of vertical. The reason is very simple. Since the line of perpendicular at any point or any at at any point on the surface of Earth at the at the um, on the surface of earth or above the surface of earth with the help of its station so suppose you have a tripod so this this is let's say your tripod the moment you install a tripod and you center it and the moment you level it leveling is done with respect to the center point this center point so for leveling what you need to do and for centering what you need to do you need a device called plumb bob which would be given this plumb bob direction the moment it, you consider this is a perpendicular so it would be considered as perpendicular to geoid not ellipsoid ellipsoid normal are drawn drawn by you not by 
natural process natural naturally the line of vertical is following the line of gravity okay if gravity is more it would be uh, deviated towards more gravity so i hope it is very clear so uh, we can move ahead what are the assumptions that we are talking about so this is again better representation this is the surface this is the vertical gravity see vertical gravity means this is your geoid okay this is your geoid so this p line this p dotted dash line is called as vertical gravity vector okay and this normal is called as normal to ellipsoid so the, the, the better way of representing the two difference uh, and these are separated by theta which we call it as uh, the deflection of vertical and please remember here uh, here you could remember that what i was telling you in the previous slide that the height of difference between geoid and ellipsoid which is also known as height of geoid with respect to ellipsoid is represented by capital n and is also known as geoid undulations okay any any uh, confusion here in this Okay, so moving ahead, as you do not have any question. So we define the definitions. The definition of the two, first, very clearly you first read, because it is very early stage, the orthometric height. This is capital H. of a point p on the surface of earth is its height above geoid measured along the curved plumb line and denoted by letter h please remember this line which for a particular local region where you are seeing that it is nearly vertical isn't it if you try to see that the plumb line which you are trying to use for centering purpose it looks to you as a flat perpendicular but generally at some places it would be a curved line also because it is following the gravity so do not uh, think that it would always be a uh, perpendicular line it would be a curved line. Better representation would be curved plumb line. But your the curve, uh, the nature of uh, this curveness uh, could not be visible to you by naked eye. You have to do a little more experiment to visualize it, considering there is a heavy gravity in the. Okay, normally, you do not face it in your uh, plane regions. The where the mass density is very high, that there must be certain places in Karnataka where the gravity varies between 10 to 15 kilometers so much that you could visualize it. Uh, but uh, that would be a different topic to discuss. But in general, the orthometric height of a point P on the surface of Earth is its height above the GY, above the GY, and measured along the curved plumb line and denoted by letter, letter H. On the other hand, the ellipsoidal height of a point on the surface of Earth is height above a reference ellipsoid measured along the ellipsoidal normal and denoted by small h. So the difference between two is one at one point you drop a perpendicular for orthometric height for any point p you drop a perpendicular but for a small h 
you measured in a line perpendicular to ellipsoidal normal this is the difference between the so called small h in capital h you go in this direction you go in this direction this is the difference between definition okay Now most people will uh, understand it it is the same but it is quite different here you are just dropping the perpendicular from your point you realize when i drop a uh, line according to uh, the perpendicular for that point that will follow the line of gravity or curved plumb line and that would be meeting geoid at a point and the height about geoid would be h but in the case of ellipsoid you cannot see ellipsoidal normal so what will do from ellipsoid you go perpendicular towards that point and you would get this so there are two different things between your uh, definition okay it is height above it is measured along the ellipsoidal norm because there is only one thing which you need to remember if you drop a perpendicular and if you have any mechanism where you can think of that this is a perpendicular it would go and meet the geoidal surface or a geoid rather than ellipsoid but from ellipsoid you have to come perpendicular to its surface to meet that point okay so these are the two definition h and small h then there is another two definition one is deflection of vertical at point p which i was telling you as theta somewhere it is represented by epsilon also but anyways the deflish def, uh, deflect deflection of vertical at a point p on the surface of earth is the angle between ellipsoidal normal and curved plumb line passing through the point denoted by symbol theta fair enough no issues at all again the deflection of vertical at any point p is the angle between the ellipsoidal normal and the curved plumb line passing through the point and denoted by symbol symbol theta second is geoidal undulation the separation between point p between a point p on the reference ellipsoid and the corresponding point on the geoid measured along the ellipsoidal normal okay and denoted by letter n so there are four definition we we discussed one is uh, capital h small h theta capital h primary uh, component of datum white height datum we need to understand these four i hope it would not be any problem because uh, you are all 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 following following it this is your theta this is your point p this is height capital h this is small h this is angle is theta this is ellipsoid this is geoid this height 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 they all are n will different values on this here so obviously uh, with the this convention of having global geodetic reference frame what happened the survey of india has also shifted in 2005 that means post 2005 the survey of india has shifted towards the geocentric coordinate system or itrf and they are using this grs 80 ellipsoid which is very common as considered as a global ellipsoid and uh, the survey of india took a conscious decision to go with geodetic your geocentric reference please remember this is very must must remember point kind of thing it is only for 2d representation height is still defined by mean sea level that is measured by indian organization survey of india along with the uh, the tidal gauge which is a network of a tidal gauge which is installed around the coastal boundaries please remember the datum which we call it for geodetic datum is only adopted or ellipsoid a global ellipsoid is only represented or chosen for a consistent uh, 2d representation for vertical it is better that individual country would have their own mean sea level information because that would be better represent the heights height variation in the country
so obviously the open series map uh, from polyconic Everest UTMWG 64 and for the DSM series they have LCCM every anyways so talking more about the vertical data because that was our interest uh, see uh, our whole objective of topographical mapping is how do we better represent the height if we are representing heights then half of our job is done because 2D representation one can easily find through UAV, through uh, UAV based mapping, through different type of mechanism has been taken care of where people are more interested in just quickly get the map rather than the accuracy point of view. Obviously the highest possible accuracy would only come from uh, your so called uh, uh, total station based survey or uh, conventional surveying techniques where you go into the field, take the measurement, take the measure features. But nowadays with compromising little bit of the accuracy, because if, if a study area doesn't have much more features, what we will do? You cannot go with the total station because total station is for precise measurement of the features. But if you have, if your study area is have no having no features or, or, or very possibly two, three features, maybe it only compiled with the tree and water bodies, plain uh, open territory, then it would not be advisable to go with a total station. Okay, It would be advisable to compromise with the accuracy and you can go ahead with the UAV kind of survey very fast and quickly you could have the survey. Okay, Obviously, a little support from the ground is required, but that can be provided, no issue at all. Okay, coming back to the definition of GUID, which we are again uh, going through. And we will not discuss the upper four. Obviously, the reason is very simple because these are the conventional definition. We are more focused towards this definition. Read it again. The geoid is the equipotential surface that most closely coincides with the undisturbed mean sea level. This is very much important. Now, it is very much clear in the definition that it should be the undisturbed mean sea level. But actually, it is not the case. Undisturbed mean sea level. Are you, are you serious? Because... There are a lot of uh, natural phenomena that disturbs this sea level, which we all know, the tides, the streams, the winds, the variation in the salinity, the temperature, etc. They are all uh, part of the climate change, you know. And the variation is of the order of plus minus two. So there are a lot of uh, satellite energy emissions are, are in, the, in the ongoing manner which collects the so-called sea surface topography. It's ST, very popular term, SST, sea surface topography. Because this variation, see, there is a mean sea level and there is a, this, there is a variation. This variation will of the order of plus minus 2 meter. And this variation is because of the variation in the surface level. And how the surface will vary? The whole high tides, low tides, temperature, and uh, the streams, the winds, and so on. The storms, which we are uh, looking right now, very recently, multiple storms comes to a year, and, and they create a havoc uh, around coastal boundaries. So, what are these? These are the natural phenomena because of climate change. These things are happening. What? How it is affecting ours? field is because because of all these the stable uh, mean sea level is not uh, there and this variation which we also called as undisturbed uh, oh, sorry the, the the variation to the undisturbed mean sea level is due to sea surface topography okay. we'll explain through one more figure so geoid is approximated by mean sea level obviously this, this is approximated by mean sea level. Why? Because mean sea level is the way you, by which you are realizing geoid. The definition of geoid is equipotential surface. That dv should be zero. Okay. Equipotential surface having equal potential. Okay. So when you have definition as equipotential, in order to achieve it, you realize it by mean sea level. Okay. 
but there is a variation between mean sea level and GUI, and that's two, which we call it as sea surface topography. And this difference between mean sea level and sea surface topography, uh, GUI is called a sea surface topography, which is of the order of plus minus one to two meters. There are many scientists, researchers working in this area. There is, in fact, marine geodesy. This field is also known as marine geodesy. In fact, a journal is also there in this name, marine geodesy, where this kind of work is actually people are interested to understand because a lot of missions are there. NASA's mission is there. Data is open source. You can start working from day one. Okay. It is all about fitting the data. You know, you need, you just need to uh, understand that what what scientists are in general working. See. If you are uh, understanding this part, what is really happening? You have uh, the data which is captured on the top of the surface, and you just need to fit in the model. That would define the sea surface topography. That's what people are doing. Okay. This is the Indian. Uh, Network of tidal gauge. You see the dots. This this kind of dots. See these kind of dots. The legend is this. This is the network of tide gauge, and uh, obviously the Survey of India is the one who is monitoring it. And see the recently people will have uh, the Survey of India have stopped uh, multiple new tide gauge stations. At uh, Gujarat border, Gujarat is considered to have a very nice and stable seawater compared to the this part of the area. Okay, so this is your tide gauge network. This is your uh, simple uh, the tide gauge uh, network module where you try to use with the help of this. Uh, this little uh, equipment, which is called as a float type tide gauge, you try to measure the variation here. See, this is considered as low water, low tide, high water, high tide, and there is in between you have a mean sea level. This, so this will go up and down to check how much water is there. And uh, obviously, previously, different type of pressure sensor tight gauge were there, float type tight gauge is there. So there are a lot of types of varieties of, uh, nowadays digital tight gauge are available. So it is only uh, your for your understanding, this, this picture is representing. And once the height information is available here, it would be transferred to a benchmark. So from bed plate, you can go to benchmark, which we are popularly aware that in near to your locality where you can start working, there would be a benchmark. From where you can transfer the height. The nearest possible benchmark is your railway station, where the it is written as the height above mean sea level would be this. Now, many any station you have a name, let's say Prayagraj, P R Y G, and then on the bottom it would be written as Samudrakul Sauchai. That would be a height above mean sea level, and which is nothing but transferred from benchmark. Okay, so this is a very small representation of uh, your so-called uh, uh, at coastal areas, you have such kind of network. So that data would be extracted like that. You, as I've told you, these are the height variation chart data. Daily, you could have a log of it. And these are certain uh, type, type, maybe spring tide, which are uh, representing the tide gates information. And these are the chart, which is prepared by these logs. Okay, so anyway, I mean we are not into the details of how tides, tide gauge are working, but this is just to represent how mean sea level is estimated. So mean sea level is estimated with the help of tide gauge. Okay. There is another part. What are creating these tides, which you should be aware of, although in details we would be reading these subjects uh, on the subject of uh, celestial uh, 
coordinate system in next semester when we'll talk about the gps so initially few for few uh, days we will uh, focus on celestial coordinate system but a little bit about the celestial sphere so this is a uh, this is a this is a coordinate system or or uh, or a sphere which uh, which contains all possible planetary bodies around us or important planetary bodies around us through which we are affected so we are morely affected or by sun and moon so this is your uh, this is a uh, sun and this is your moon so we are more popularly affected by this but what is more important is you need to understand that a lot of assumption were into the picture now this figure represent that as if sun is because this is your earth let's say a point on the earth or maybe you could consider as a flat disk or whatever you want uh, i generally take it assumption as a point that this is your earth and this figure shows that the apparent motion of sun around earth but that's not true your uh, sun is not moving around earth your earth is moving around sun isn't it but for the definition of these coordinate system you need to realize on certain apparent motion apparent motion means considering earth as a rest how the behavior of sun could be represented so obviously it would be represented as an ecliptic path the sun's path on ecliptic otherwise the path on which earth is moving around sun is known as ecliptic there's a difference between elliptic and ecliptic so it is ecliptic not ellipse elliptic so this the motion of earth around the sun this path is known as ecliptic and here we are representing an apparent motion of earth uh, sorry sun around earth and that's how you represent the sun would come like this there is another apparent motion obviously with the moon how the moon is uh, moving around the sun so obviously it could be represented by this so there is a point where earth and moon coincide the path i would say where the uh, this uh, sun and moon would be here and this uh, is this concept of event is called as astronomic nutation and it reappears after 8.6 years so there is a secular precession and periodic nutation so this short periodic nutation which happens after 18.6 years so what happened at this point when the sun and moon are uh, at this place they would be attracting or focusing or, or providing a lot more gravitational attraction on the surface of earth and that's create those high tides where water column gets attracted towards those uh, gravitational forces um, by sun and moon and that creates the high tides so obviously these are the uh, this one basic nature is because of your uh, we could call it as the for uh, tides there is another region where your uh, earth oblateness earth oblateness means this is your oblate earth and there is a whole lot of mass is 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 here near the equator why because your earth is it, it, it is pushing the water it is pushing the water uh, as well as mass to towards the equator and that's why there is a lot of mass here okay the centrifugal force at the same time your moon is also attracting okay. so what happens the earth is moving towards uh, in a certain path but it attracts also so it produces a torque also okay and that torque is such that it wanted uh, the torque uh, it wanted is uh, that is uh, acted upon the earth in such a manner that it want that the tilt of earth should be straight away in this line perpendicular to this line but in that same manner earth this Uh, the centrifugal force also provides a reverse torque because it would be you know uh, the the activity and because of this this wobbling effect on the so called the earth rotation axis is there which is which can be seen if you go into the space as an observer then you can see this wobbling effect so earth is not simply rotating it is wobbling 
and this wobble is is uh, is heavy or you would say there would be a direct effect on the earth rotation axis when it is if this bulge is in front of the moon when this bulge moves away a little bit then this wobbling effect is less otherwise it would be more anyways this we'll discuss more about this wobbling effect and everything in the next semester in much more detailed manner but need to understand the responsibility of tides are because of the gravitational attractions from sun and obviously uh, we are more uh, interested in understanding the earth not from the topographical surface that means the way we are standing on the surface of earth but we also want to look at the surface just away from earth so that we would you know most probably would better understand the certain other natural phenomena that is occurring on the earth we are more interested in just while we are uh, you know uh, on the surface of earth we will be more interested with the natural phenomena that is associated with the earth only that means earthquake you know subsidence ice glacial glaciers uh, melting sea level rise these are the sir local phenomena if i would say there would be some more associated phenomena if we move away from the surface of earth and we try to see our body imaginary you can look at our your earth surface and how it is moving in space what are the forces acting over it how the length of the day is increasing how the length of the day would be reducing what are those effects so that that time we would be more uh, appreciating how the different forces that are acting over it and how these forces and uh, all all kind of effects uh, would be modeled so that uh, there would be solid tides also there would be liquid tides also that means not only the surface uh, of water at the sea is attracted towards gravity uh, gravitational forces by sun and moon there would be also certain solid tides that means the mass is also attracted and that got disturbed so we are not only dis uh, uh, discussing about the solid uh, liquid tides we are also interested in terms of solid tide that's why this whole understanding of uh, tides is uh, used as it is called solid and liquid tides and there is another a uh, this uh, error part or phenomena part which we are more interested in is called as polar motion polar motion means from top you could uh, from top you could just realize this is your surface of earth uh, this is your uh, rotation axis that is exiting from uh, the top north pole but it is not actually north pole in fact it is it is had it is it is is on this path actually the the position of this uh, this uh, point or intersection of rotation axis with earth crest is moving with respect to time it is not fixed this is one phenomena which we call it as polar motion okay. and then obviously the orientation of earth with respect to inertial space this is how earth is oriented in space okay so these are all constituents of we in general we call it earth orientation parameter the polar motion the precession the nutation the you know the length of the day the all are we will discussing in the next semester in more detail it is very interesting subject the more you go into the depth the more you understand the natural processes the more you get inclined towards understanding more of these eops which is very very quite interesting topic which will cover in next next uh, so semester in detail obviously this is the uh, high precision leveling network that has been established by survey of india and you could see that these there are these uh, so called the there are uh, dotted lines which is gravity network this is a uh, leveling network red lines and uh, there are certain yes this is the four and back i mean going this direction and coming back to again this direction this is a network which is consisting of around 40000 kilometers 
now you could imagine that uh, what has happened that means from this point people started traveling here 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 and reaching to kathua then from barmer we could have started reaching so they because leveling phenomena requires human resources to travel on the surface of earth and by every certain kilometers let's say you would have to establish certain points and that points would define the level network of the continent or of the country so you have to move with whole instrumentation and on the surface of earth or through roads around the roads or around the continents between cities to cities you have to move on foot with the instrumentation then only such kind of network is established and the second uh, since it is a it is a second uh, phase phase 1 was there there was phase 2 also there that happened around between 1970 to 1980 where this whole network was reestablished the vertical datum is reestablished because obviously what is really happening because your earth is not a is a static body it is a dynamic body where yeah? Lot of geophysical phenomena is occurring. So, and our Earth is our the plate where we are standing right now is moving at a certain rate towards Himalaya. That means it is colliding with the Eurasian plate, and because of which we have Himalaya phenomena, the geophysical phenomena. So our Earth crust is also moving. That means this whole body is moving in this direction. This whole body, maybe. Uh, we are uh, just re reading and uh, following the content maybe in future what is predicted and it has been said by many geophysical scientists that the narmada the narmada nadi which is flowing in between from amarkanta so in future you would be traveling from this part of region to this part of region that means to opposite part of the region of narmada by sea kind of uh, feature that means there would be set the whole india would be separated by two not so it will take multi more years if this rate of movement would increase then this phenomena would be coming very soon otherwise if the whole phenomena is very slow of movement then this separation from mid of the india would be uh, pretty less because this part is 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 not moving very much fast compared to this part and any in any case your earthquake phenomena is such that uh, anything happen can any any time so that would create a lot of havoc also but anyways these are some predictions but anyways and a major earthquake is coming in in soon in delhi and in uttarakhand in himachal so these are the three belts of a major epicenter for earthquakes soon in next Five to ten years, we'll be having one major earthquake that has been predicted by scientists. So this would also create a triggering event towards the change in the movement of Indian plate, because once you have an earthquake, two kinds of things would happen. One is either your plate would move slow down or it will move fast. It would not be static because in any ways your load plates are already moving, so it would trigger their movement in a in a faster manner or it would slow it down. So let us see. and these are some phenomena which uh, we need to carefully monitor but what is more important is we need to understand here is that how the vertical network is established very very uh, very uh, risky job i would say because you have to travel a lot and every single line you have to travel with more precision measurement is with more precision and how it is done it is obviously with the basic leveling network and uh, not only the measurement is important the adjustment of the network is important that means if you are trying to see there is a one loop of uh, is is prepared here there is one loop there is another loop there is another loop so these are if you do not adjust these loops what will happen the errors will propagate so these are the individual loops where people are. there is there is there is a network which is nothing but you move go from here to here then you come again here to here so these are the way you know, from moving to a you 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 move a to b through this network and you came back from this network but obviously the objective is that loop should be closed that means height of a should be achieved while coming back to same as you have chosen the height as a benchmark or whatever initial height you have taken 
So these are the loop closures which we are more interested as a geo informatics because you are reading one subject of geospatial data processing where you will be taking one example. I mean, this is the beauty. That means you will be taking one example of a leveling network adjustment problem where you will see that how you have uh, estimated this height uh, of any point with the help of a adjustment process. So we will see that example in our theory course, but you need to understand this, uh, the network or, or because uh, more importantly, many would be interesting in how some mean sea level height is available at our place, isn't it? Many of you, those who are not available with the leveling process, they would be curious to know how the height is available, the mean sea level height is available at uh, Allahabad, or sorry, Prayagraj, or Kanpur, or maybe your station where you are native places. So obviously it is it is thrifted from the, these are the coastal network points, isn't it? These are means the tight gauge network which are established. So Vishakhapatnam, Mumbai, and uh, obviously the Rajkot, Bhuvaneshwar, Calcutta. So they are all uh, popular, uh, I would say, the destination point from where uh, Survey of India start their work for leveling network. So they will they will see this uh, uh, the uh, the work of uh, uh, shifting the benchmark from this to any place in the Nagpur to Bhopal or to Jhansi anywhere. It would go through this network line. You cannot directly jump from here to here. You have to move through a line, what network line, and then only you will achieve this this uh, mean sea level values. So obviously it is a it is a process which is very well established and many countries are following it. What what is more um, uh, technological advancement is that now there is a project by U.S. Uh, uh, NGS that they are trying to establish the vertical datum through satellite missions. So satellite missions are providing gravity values or gravity data. They are trying to establish the datum with the help of gravity value. That's why the project name is GravD. So they are trying to establish the gravity values using gravity values, I would say, and then trying to establish a datum, vertical data. The reason is simple. Why? Nobody wants to do this kind of task. That means going to bench mean sea level information, taking that mean sea level information, using as a benchmark, going ahead with the leveling network and then coming back to your native places or, or location of uh, other network points to provide them a height value, isn't it? So this is a, this is a uh, I mean, uh, recent development. In fact, India is also uh, interested in moving ahead in that direction where it wants the satellite uh, missions to provide a complementary role in establishing the gravity data. So you need to understand this and uh, also uh, you need to understand that two major theory courses that would be more uh, inclined towards understanding the gravity would be from physical geodesic. If you have uh, interest, you can go ahead and online you can, uh, and in fact, there are various tutorials are also available on physical geodesy, where more or less people are talking about the gravity, gravitational potential, and how, how this gravitation, gravitational potential are estimated. This gravity network, would, it, would be, uh, it would be installed, it would uh, give the gravity potential values in fact. And the, that's how you have your uh, leveling kind of number. Obviously, with the uh, laboratory, uh, we'll discuss more. But still, you have an instrument here. You take the benchmark reading here. You know what is uh, the benchmark here at A. And when you want to hide, know the height of B. So with the help of the instrument here, the instrument here, you can take the back side, you can take the fore side. You know the difference between these two. What would be the difference? Here it is three, it is one. So what would be the difference? Obviously, it's two. So, but anyways, the objective is to uh, use such kind of network for transferring the height from this benchmark to this point. 
this is the objective so suppose this is the height of mean c11 which is given at certain point you want to transfer it you know you want to transfer it to this point and once you travel along the uh, path or destination which is given by survey of india you have to study such station more more stations station here station here station here and then you take back side intermediate side okay? and then you change the location then you work on it so this is the process of labeling again uh, what is our objective in future or, or the objective of survey of india is that you do not need to think of a level transfer what you need to do you just need have need to have a gps with you you switch on your gps you get the small h because from gps what you are getting you are getting ellipsoidal height not the orthometric height so from gps if you are getting a small h which is now in your mobile is also there is a gps isn't it so if you place it on a certain platform and you get the value h you can have this n value with you and you can directly sorry and you can directly compute the capital h so uh, the height which we are talking about the capital h which is very very much clear the the, the capital h which is very much clear is the orthometric height the small h which is ellipsoidal height and this is geoidal undulation so if uh, this angle is very less i mean very 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 less this deflection of vertical is not much more so considering that the deflection of vertical is less this relationship could be established that means capital h plus n would be ellipsoidal height so what you what i want to say here is if you have this h value from the gps which is very quick nowadays if you have a gps you switch on the button and you just take the reading you will get this h value ellipsoidal value and this n would come from the gravitational potential models or gravity models or or, or 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 a global geoid model if this model is available that means the undulation would be available and if the undulation is available you can add or subtract from this ellipsoidal height what you will get you will get the orthometric height that means the height mean of above mean sea level to start your work from the day one so that is that is the vision which which we as in geophobics are working for obviously the because of the gravity missions there are a lot of anomalies and scientists are still contributing in that field so hopefully within next 5 years you would be having this uh, in fact the new global geoid model is coming in 2020 it is not released yet but the egm08 which is very popular but now it has been revised to egm20 will be released by 2022 and that would provide pn values so you would have uh, n values into your system you can have any capital h value whenever you want see the challenge is gravity uh, sorry the challenge is to have the orthometric height okay so to have the orthometric height what you need to understand that uh, orthometric height is only computed by establishing a le level network you cannot simply have a by a magical box you cannot have this value for orthometric height you need to establish the level network and level network can have uh, certain complications certain uh, human resources are required in order to avoid that but for gps there is no human resources required you have instrument you can have h values small h values but if you have a model like egm20 which we are talking about you can simply transform and get the capital h value that is to convert from small h to capital h you need n that is what our objective is okay so any question in this sir uh, you can't they, they do do not have the mean sea level or coastal line then how they calculate the local height sorry uh, some of the countries they do not have the coastal line sir and they okay. they they are not measuring uh, mean sea level then how they calculate mm. local height i mean you are saying that some countries do not have their tide networks yes sir yes yes sir. 
okay so maybe they 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 would be sharing the information with uh, with the uh, i mean i mean other countries i am not having any such detailed idea i mean what countries were specifically talking about like kazakhstan they don't have the coastal land then how they measure the local height and so maybe they would be sharing the height information with other countries because mm-hmm. for you let's say for european net union they, every european union doesn't have their own uh, coastline but they share the data with themselves like survey of india also share with the data with the nepal and bangladesh yes mm-hmm. maybe by that uh, they would be having certain information any questions sir geo surface kaun sa hota hai sir ab bhai ye to matlab puri kahani khatam ho gayi ab tum puch rahe ho geo surface kaun sa hota hai क्या नाम है आपका नाम बताइए जरा शिवम क्या आपने समझा अभी तक जो हमने पढ़ाया सर ये जियोट का नहीं पता चलता था सर अभी तक पारुल बताइए व्हाट इज जियोइड सरफेस यस सर थोड़ा बताइए इनको सर जियोइड इज ए इमेजिनरी सरफेस इज इट इज अक्वी पोटेंशियल सरफेस एंड इट को इन साइड विथ मीन सी लेवल एंड जियोडेटिक हाइट इज द हाइट फ्रॉम द टोपो टोपोग्राफी टू द लेप्सॉइडल सरफेस एंड इट ऑल्स इट कोइड विद द एम एम मीन सी लेवल थोड़ा एक बार फिर से बताइए सर कैन आई एक्सप्लेन सर हु इज इट जॉइड भगत हां भगत बताएं आप ही बताएं आप भी बताएं okay, तो एक्चुअली जियो सर्वर इज ए इज ए इमेजिनरी सरफेस वेयर वी कीपिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ जी इक्वल टू 9.8 मीटर पर सेकंड इक्वली एवरीवेयर तो सो दैट्स व्हाई इट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम मीन सी लेवल and ellipsoid uh, surface right image surface we keep by keeping the g value of 9.8 meter per second everywhere aur koi batana chahega so uh, uh, like geoid is a equipotential surface by equipotential we mean that uh, that a uh, uh, point on every uh, like uh, every point on surface uh, is same like means gravitation is same at every point that is why we called is a equipotential surface and it is a imaginary surface Hmm. और कोई बताएगा सर इट इज ए मैथमेटिकल सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ एंड द बेस्ट अप्रोक्सिमेशन ऑफ द मीन सी लेवल
नहीं इसको मीन्स मीन्स ही इसको मैथमेटिकल सरफेस नहीं बोलेंगे जीवाइट को क्योंकि इट इज नॉट फॉर्म्ड बाई यू नो एनी काइंड ऑफ फिटिंग एनी मॉडल और समथिंग लग दैट इट इज जस्ट अप्रोक्सीमेटेड फॉर ए पर्टिकुलर मैनर विद द हेल्प ऑफ ए वैल्यूज ऑफ प्रीवियस नाइनटीन ईयर्स ऑफ डेटा फॉर मीन सिलेबल सो सपोज Uh, you just want to understand in the in the manner that if you have to find a geoite for 2020 for india so what you would be doing you would be taking the previous 19 year of measurement that means 2001 to 2019 of mean sea level and then taking averaging and then working with a uh, so called uh, uh, mean sea level for 2020 similarly if you go with the 2021 the another previous 19 year data which consist of all those values so it is uh, more or less uh, you would be uh, surprised that uh, it is only values which are measured with the help of certain networks and these values are documented and you are just working with it it is not uh, as if you are fitting certain things with that data set you understand this point so we we do not call geoid as a mathematical surface rather we give this mathematical surface uh, notation to our ellipsoidal surface where uh, the scientists try to use certain points the fiducial points all over the surface and try to best fit that ellipsoid with having certain uh, major axis minor axis and flat plane so this term of mathematical surface is given to ellipsoids rather than geoid so sir can we say it is the uh, शेप ऑफ दशियन सरफेस ऑफ दर्थ ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी नहीं ऐसा नहीं कहेंगे ऐसा नहीं कहेंगे क्योंकि द रीजन इज वर्किंग विद सी लेवल बिकॉज इनिशली वॉट साइंटिस्ट थॉट दैट सिंस लॉट ऑफ अर्थ कंसिस्ट ऑफ लिक्विड सो बेटर यू वर्क विद द सर्फेसिस दैट that are only water bodies maybe there is the surfaces of sea level but it is not at the case because the solid is also an integral part of it but at the same time solid variation is so much around the continents that you cannot be consistent in terms of defining the shape so for that matter only they have chosen the sea level or mean sea level to represent as a gui otherwise only sea level is not not uh, in the definition it is representing both solid as well as liquid but i understand that uh, a lot of uh, i mean candidates candidates are uh, you know following the content those who have still little doubts in terms of uh, the content they i will upload the slides you can go through and uh, try to see okay so with this we uh, stop here and uh, on uh, next uh, laboratory class we'll move ahead from here, uh, this point obviously because there are a lot of content which is uh, there related to coordinate system or geometrical geodesy which is uh, uh, will be discussed in next semester uh, in the course of gps but what is more important is how to work with this uh, so called Uh, topographical mapping how to initiate the topographical mapping with the help of uh, our instrument uh, that is one part of challenge which we need to discuss a lot more so we'll be uh, focusing more in that area obviously there are sort of uh, certain overlap area between uh, our discussion part and the theory class which we are following in gdp 
so we will be taking care of certain model related issues certain um, you know data adjustment issues in the gdp codes we'll be discussing here more about the technical content related to coordinate system map projections uh, important ways of establishing the network how to uh, establish a network which is required for precision topography mapping rather than uh, and, and the alternatives also we need to discuss so the topographical mapping using uab we could also discuss that part also because nowadays people are more more or less into this to fast uh, topographically map a particular area so we will discuss that part also yeah this is one uh, very nice representation which i was uh, referring to the ezm 20 uh, geoidal undulations which are given for indian continent which is prepared by one student at it kanpur so this uh, shows the the variation with respect to you know the n values and uh, soon this will be uh, published and uh, you will be having more access towards it this is prepared by satellite missions not by actual ground data it is prepared by satellite data the n values which is as, as i have told you the, the missions which are representing or, or observing the gravity uh, they would be uh, in a position to give this value So 